Praise the Lord. Merry Christmas. I hope that you're doing well this festive season and that you're taking care of yourself. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a wonderful time with your family, with your friends. And if you're traveling, take care. And we pray that God will protect you even as it's time we celebrate the birth of his son, Jesus Christ, who came to save us, to set us free from the powers of darkness and to grant us everlasting life. This is a Christmas edition. And so today I want us to also invite you to share your Christmas messages with us. Even as we continue in this celebration mood, we are so grateful that Jesus Christ was born and we are celebrating it and we are shouting from the rooftops that our Savior has been born. Welcome to today's program. I pray that even as you celebrate this Christmas, God will continue to bless you and to provide for you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today. We pray that, Lord, you will continue to provide for your people. We thank you, Lord, for the birth of Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, for giving him to us. And Lord, we honor and praise your name. You are our Father and our God, and there is none like you. In Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Amen and amen. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. Act now here. Angels sing, a king was born today, and may he live forevermore because of Christmas Day. Act now, hear the angels sing, a king was born today, and may he live forevermore. Because of Christmas Day, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills and everywhere go Tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is Lord That Jesus Christ is Lord That Jesus Christ is Lord Praise the Lord, everyone. How are you? Merry Christmas again. This is the wonderful time uh, to be alive. And we are so happy and we are so grateful that God has allowed us to actually see uh, this time and, and in this season. Uh, we know that there are many people who really wanted to see Christmas, but many have not seen it. And we also know that there are many other people who really wanted to uh, you know, to get to Christmas when they were healthy. But my, most of them are in hospitals. And so we are grateful today. And we pray for those who have lost their loved ones. We pray for those who are in hospitals, that God will comfort you and that God will heal you. And we also rejoice with those ones who are in health. And we pray that today you will continue to grow and thrive in health. So today, as you guessed it, it is a message, a Christmas message. And I want to share with you uh, briefly about Jesus Christ, the coming of Jesus. 
You see, every year for generations now, um, people have celebrated the coming of Jesus Christ or the birth of Jesus Christ. And I want to say that historically, Jesus Christ is the greatest human being to have ever been born, historically. When he was born, everything changed. And when he died, everything changed. The entire Bible from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation it refers to the time when Jesus will be on earth. If you're reading the Bible from the angle of Genesis, you, you realize that the Bible is predicting the coming of Jesus Christ. And so from Genesis to Malachi, the Bible is looking forward to the coming of Jesus Christ. When you get to the New Testament in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you begin to realize that even as you go along and you begin to read the Bible, you are looking back to when Jesus has already come, dwelt among human beings, and died and rose again on the third day. So the entire Bible, the culmination of everything in the Bible is Jesus Christ. When he came and he died and he rose again on the third day for the forgiveness of our sins. And that is why today and tomorrow and in these few days, the world, the entire world, separates this time to remember the birth of Jesus Christ. It is perhaps the most celebrated birth in the universe. No other person has ever been celebrated. No other birthday has ever been celebrated to the magnitude in which we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior. There are contentions, of course, by people who do not believe in Jesus when they say that God cannot have a son. But I want to say to you today that Jesus Christ is the son of God and he has been born. And I want us to look at scriptural evidence as to the prediction or the prophecy of the birth of Jesus Christ, how it was foretold. And I also want us to look at why, this, uh, why Jesus Christ was born and why God decided to wrap himself in humanity. You see, the Christian story is the best story there is. I know of other religions who have their, uh, their different stories, but none of the other religions has a similar story as the story of Jesus Christ or the story of Christianity. The story of Christianity is a story of redemption. It is a story in which we no longer have to seek for God because God has come to us. It is the only uh, story in which God dwells in the heart of a man or in the heart of a person. This is the wonderful story, the story of redemption, the story of assurance, the story of hope, the story where we have eternal life or everlasting life. It is a story where God humbles himself to reach out to a mere man. It is a story in which God expresses his love, expresses his kindness, and he expresses it in ways that we cannot even explain. We cannot even begin to understand the kind of God that we serve, the kind of God who will give up his only son to die so that this son can become an atonement and his blood can atone for our sins. Christian story, Christmas story, or Bible story of the Jesus story is the best story there is because it is in this story that we find redemption. It is in this story that we find freedom. It is in this story that we find power. It is in this story that we find reconciliation with God. It is the only religion, the only faith in which God has chosen to reconcile himself to the creation that he has created with his own hands. So the Christmas story is not just about uh, slaughtering goats and eating meat in the African culture. It is not just about balloons and Santa Claus in the European culture, the Western culture. It is about Jesus Christ. And I've heard people say that Jesus is the reason for the season. If you're celebrating and you are doing all these things 
at your home and you're in a, a festive mood, remember Jesus Christ. Remember that Jesus is the reason uh, for the season. The reason why we have these holidays, the reason why we have these festive seasons is because Jesus Christ has been born and he has become our Lord and our Savior. And let's look at some scriptures in the Bible. Very briefly and hopefully, I believe that God will continue to reveal to us things in the Bible about the prediction or the prophecy that was spoken hundreds of years before Jesus Christ was born. And one of the places to begin is in the book of Genesis chapter 1 and, and chapter 2 and 3. And even as you read these scriptures, you begin to realize that God's promise of Jesus Christ came at the time of the beginning. When God says to the serpent that the seed of the woman shall crush your head, the seed of the woman signifies Jesus Christ, and the serpent signifies Lucifer or the devil or the one we call Satan uh, with all his hosts. He shall be crushed at the, uh, by, his, uh, by the foot of, the, of Jesus Christ, by the heel of Jesus Christ. And at the cross, this crushing happened, and so we are redeemed. But let us look at the book of Isaiah, chapter 9 and verse 6. And I'm going to go through my notes because I had prepared for this, and I hope that you will stay with me even as we look at this, uh, the Christmas story or the salvation story and how it began. And in the book of Isaiah, chapter 9 and verse 6, the Bible says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is one of the most powerful scriptures, one of the most powerful Bible verses to predict or to prophesy the coming of Jesus or the birth of Jesus Christ. This is a prophetic verse from the Old Testament. And this prophetic verse foretells the birth and significance of a future ruler or king. And we know that this future ruler that Isaiah is talking about is none other but than Jesus Christ. It is actually anticipating the birth of Jesus Christ. Let us look at this verse and, and, and break it down so that we are able to understand what it means. The Bible, or this verse, begins by saying, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. This is the part of the verse that is speaking about the birth of a child and it talks about this child being given to humanity. It is almost as if this child is born for humanity. So when he says, for to us a child is born, to us a child is given, he's referring to the entire world, the entire creation, and the entire universe. For to us all the universe, to us all the creation, to us as human beings, a child is born. This child is born to us, and this child is born for us, and this child is born within us. So he will become man. It signifies the coming of Jesus Christ, or the coming of a significant figure, and this figure is Jesus. So the Bible is talking about a human being who will be born, and he will become so great and so significant that the entire world, the entire creation, the entire universe will be grateful and will be glad that the child was born. For to us a child is born, and to us a son is given. This is not just a word that is spoken. This is a word of transformation. This is a son and a child who will come to this world transform everything. Remember, when Isaiah was writing this, the child had not yet been born. The son had not yet been given. 
And so Isaiah is prophesying and is speaking into the future, probably 700 years before this prophecy or, or this son is born or this child is given. And he uh, predicts and speaks about this child. And he says to us, a son is given. The question I have for you today, knowing that we know that Jesus Christ has already been born and that this prophecy has been fulfilled. The question I have to ask you is this, even in the birth of Jesus, as we commemorate and as we remember and we celebrate, is a child born in your heart? Has Jesus Christ become your savior? Or are you still trying to figure out how life should be? Are you a believer of Jesus? For if you are not a believer of Jesus, whatever we are talking about today may not make sense to you. Even the festive season that we are at in this time will not make sense to you. You will celebrate, but you will celebrate that which you do not know about. You will be happy, and maybe you will even be glad that, there are, that you have a long holiday, but then you will not understand the significance of the time in which you live. For in the days of Isaiah, there was no Christmas, for the child had not yet been given, and the son had not yet been born. And these prophets, and especially Isaiah, longed to see the day in which this child will be born. We are living at a time when the child Jesus Christ has already been born. And in this time, in 2023, December 25th, we are looking back, celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. But is he born in your home? Is he born in your heart? Is he born in your businesses? Is he born in your mind? Or are you still figuring out? The second part or the second portion of this verse in Isaiah talks about, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And the government will be on his shoulders. This child who will be born shall bear heavy burdens, the burdens of government. This part of scripture, or this part in this verse, suggests that this child will carry the responsibility of governing or leading. So it implies leadership roles and authority. Let me repeat that. And the government will be on his shoulders. So this part, specifically uh, this part, suggests that this child will carry the responsibility of governing or leading. It implies a leadership role or authority. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. I have had a quote that says, heavy is the head that carries the crown. And it signifies the heavy responsibilities, the decisions that leaders have to make, and the heaviness in which sometimes they have to make these decisions. The government will be on his shoulder. This child will carry heavy responsibilities. He will be a ruler. He will be a leader. And if you look at the significance of that, when Jesus was born, everything changed. When you read the book of Luke, especially Luke, you will see how Luke describes the time in which Jesus was born. Several things happened. For example, there was a star that appeared from nowhere. and It was a star that represented a king. There were angels in the heavens. There were shepherds who saw those angels. There was a lot of activities at that time of the birth of Jesus Christ. And so even as Jesus was born and as Jesus grew in this world, we see the government and we see the responsibilities that came upon him. We see him leading 12 men, transforming their lives such that they began to transform the entire known world of their time. This was the Christmas time. This was the time of 
uh, transformation. And Jesus Christ transformed the entire world by the fact that he was born. The third part that this Bible, uh, this verse talks about is, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And I want to ask you a question even before I begin to break down that. Has Jesus been transformational in your life? Has Jesus, have you allowed Jesus to be in your life, to transform your life, to transform your family, to transform your children? Have you opened the door for Jesus Christ to come into your life and help you carry the responsibilities that you carry? Have you helped him to come and become the governor of your life, to take charge over you, to take charge upon your life? These are questions that I may ask, but we are in a festive season in which we have to reflect back and see these things and ask about these things and the application of this season upon our own personal life. Other than the parties, other than visiting your relatives, other than traveling across the world on holiday and vacation, other than all that, is Jesus Christ the governor of your life? Is Jesus Christ in your heart? Because my friends, we can celebrate all we want. We can jump up and down. We can travel across the world as we desire. But we have to ask ourselves one question. If we die, will heaven be our home? If we die, will we be with Jesus on the other side? Do we understand what we are celebrating? And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So the verse here, this portion of the verse, gives us a list of several names or titles that this child will be known by. And so it gives us the significant descriptions of the character and nature of this future ruler. So when he talks about, he says, he will be called Wonderful Counselor. That portion of, of scripture says that he will possess extraordinary wisdom and guidance. Wonderful Counselor. He will counsel you. He will counsel the world. He will, he will possess extraordinary wisdom and guidance. And today I ask you a question. Is Jesus Christ your wonderful counselor? Do you live by his extraordinary wisdom and guidance? Or do you just exist? Even as we celebrate his birth, is he a wonderful counselor to your life? Is he a wonderful counselor in your marriage? Is he a wonderful counselor in your business dealings? Is he a wonderful counselor in your career or academics? The next title that the Bible is talking about is that he will be known as Mighty God. In other words, he will not just be an ordinary human being, but he will also carry the divine aspect of being God himself. And this is the most interesting thing about Jesus Christ. While Jesus, when Jesus was born, and while he walked on this earth, he was 100% human being and 100% God. He was 100% human being and he was 100% God. And so he will be known as Mighty God. And the third title that Jesus Christ or this child is given is Everlasting Father, meaning that he will have attributes of a caring and eternal father. He will have a father figure uh, aspect to him, showing love and compassion. For to us a child is born, and a son is given. 
This son will be known as everlasting father. He will express love and compassion to humanity. He will express love and compassion to us as human beings. And this is one of his titles. So the question I have to ask for you is this. Is Jesus Christ a father in your life? Have you accepted his love and his compassion? Even as you celebrate, even as you enjoy this time and this season, is Jesus Christ your everlasting father? And the fourth title that the Bible talks about is the Prince of Peace. He will bring peace, not just in a worldly sense, but also peace between humanity and God. And this is the most important kind of peace where God will no longer destroy people with fire. But whenever he is about to destroy people, Jesus will be the peace broker. He will be there to, uh, to make intercession on our behalf. If you look at the scriptures, before Jesus Christ came to the earth, God dealt very harshly with the people of the Old Testament. But when Jesus came and he died on the cross, he became the atonement for our sins. He brought the peace between us and God. And the question I have to ask you today is this. Are you enjoying peace between yourself and God? Is there that peace, that joy, that calmness where you do not feel judged by God, but you believe that God is at peace with you and that you are at peace with God. For to us a child is born and to us a son is given. He will be called mighty God, wonderful counselor, everlasting father, prince of peace. And these are all wonderful titles that exemplify or they show Jesus Christ. He is the father, he is a mighty God, he is the Prince of Peace, and He is the Wonderful Counselor. And even as we celebrate this, we must remember these things. So that is Isaiah who prophesies and predicts Jesus Christ. Let us look at Mark, Micah chapter 5 and verse 2. The book of Micah, but it says, But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Micah chapter 5 and verse 2 is a prophetic verse. It is found in the Old Testament. It foretells the birthplace and significance of Jesus Christ, where he will be born. In fact, Micah calls this town by name. Bethlehem. And he says, from you will come one who will be a ruler. This is a verse that prophesies or speaks about the, the coming of Jesus. Let us break this verse down so that we are able to understand. The first portion says, but you Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah. So this verse points to the specific location where this significant person will originate from. Remember at that time when Micah was writing, he did not know that he was talking about Jesus Christ, but he knew that whoever he was talking about must have been a great and significant figure. Bethlehem. A, significant, a, a seemingly insignificant town among the tribes of Judah was highlighted as a birthplace of this future ruler or the birthplace of Jesus Christ. In truth, Bethlehem was a small town. It was insignificant in many ways. And I want to say to you today, that your life may look insignificant. You may be insignificant. You may come from an insignificant home or an insignificant background, but God uses anything to glorify his name. 
And this time he will use you and work through you to glorify his name. The second portion says, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel. So despite the insignificance of Bethlehem, despite its smallness, it is destined, this uh, little town, they are destined to produce a leader who will govern Israel, who will govern the world. So this speaks of Jesus Christ who will emerge from this humble town. And you remember at the time of the birth of Jesus, uh, the Caesar at that time gave a command that everyone must return to their town so that they can be counted because he wanted to take census. And it was not just a coincidence. It shows you that God can use political leaders so that his will can be fulfilled. He can use them as tools so that he can fulfill his will. The third portion of this, of this scripture says, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Now this signifies the extraordinary nature of Jesus or the, extra, the extraordinary nature of this ruler. He suggests that while this person, remember Micah does not know him, while this person will be born in Bethlehem, his origin is ancient. His origin is, you know, goes far and deep. His origin is divine, implying that there was a pre-existence or divine nature that extends far back in history, meaning that this is a son of David. This is the root of David. But Micah did not know that. He just prophesied. So we have looked at two scriptures. There are many other scriptures, but we have looked at two that signify or that prophesy the coming of Jesus Christ or the birth of Jesus Christ. We are in a festive season and we are enjoying this festive season, but we have to understand why. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 2, verse 10 and 11 so that then we can see the fulfillment of these two prophecies that we have read about. The Bible says, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Today, and I want to say to you today, let me read that scripture again. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. This scripture captures the moment of the birth of Jesus Christ. It recounts the announcement made by an angel to shepherds in the fields near Bethlehem. Remember again, Micah has spoken about Bethlehem and now it has come to pass. Isaiah has told us, for to us a child is born. In other words, this child will bring great joy. His birth will be a joy to the entire world. Let us break down this scripture. So it begins by saying, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. Now, the first thing that you have to understand is that when an angel appears to you, the, the experience can be frightening and it can be awe-inspiring. And so the angel begins with a reassurance, reassuring the shepherds, indicating that they are about to hear good news. So he begins by saying, do not be afraid which means the shepherds may have been startled by the appearance of an angel. They did not expect him, but he just appeared. The second portion says, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. So they are the angel announces the arrival of something incredibly significant and joyful. It is something so significant 
that only an angel can announce it, not a human being. And this news, he says, is not just for a select few, but for all people. And so he, he's emphasizing the universality of its importance and impact. For to us, a child is born, and to us, a son is given. It is not limited whether you are a Muslim watching me, or a Hindu, or whatever religion you believe in, or a, an atheist, and you do not believe, this news is for you too. Whether you are a backslidden Christian, or you are a Christian who has lost touch or lost direction, this news is also for you too. For to us, a child is born. And the, the third portion says, Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. So the angel reveals the core message of why he has come. There is a Savior. There is a birth of a Savior in Bethlehem. So this newborn, this child who has been born, is referred to as a Messiah, the long-awaited deliverer, an anointed one promised in the prophecy, in the Jewish prophecy, has finally arrived. So this child is not an ordinary child, but he is a savior who has been foretold by Isaiah and by Micah. And to conclude, let us answer the question, the purpose of the arrival of Jesus Christ. And for this, let us go to John chapter 3 and verses 16. This is a, a scripture that is known, and many of us even know it by heart. But let us go through it and read it. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. This is one of the most widely quoted biblical texts. It is one of the most cherished verses in the Bible. It summarizes the fundamental aspect of Christian faith and theology. In other words, if you are to wrap up the entire Bible, it is wrapped up in this one verse, John 3.16. Remember, this John 3.16 uh, culminates from a conversation that Jesus was having with Nicodemus. And it is at this point that Jesus brings in the punch for the reason why he came to this world, the reason why he came to die and resurrect again. For God so loved the world, the first portion talks about that, that emphasizes the depth and magnitude of God's love it speaks of a divine, unconditional love that God has for us. And this love is covering the whole world, regardless of religion. Every person, regardless of status, regardless of sexual orientation, regardless of wherever you are, whatever you've done, God loves you. Even in this season of Christmas, this festive season, God loves you. The second portion says that he gave his one and only son, which means that it highlights the act of sacrificial giving by God. It refers to the sending of Jesus Christ, God's only son into the world. This act that God practices of giving is a demonstration of God's love for humanity. God loves you that he gave his one and only son, and he gave this one and only son into our hands so that he can die through our hands so that he can also save us from the pain of death. And the third portion says that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. This is a promise to all who believe in Jesus Christ. It talks about faith in Christ. When you believe in Jesus, you put your trust and you believe in him, you will not face spiritual death, but you will have eternal life and everlasting relationship with God. Jesus is a reason 
for the season. If you believe in Jesus, you have secured for yourself everlasting life. If you believe in Jesus as Lord, you have secured for yourself an eternal relationship with God, both here on earth and in heaven. As you celebrate in this season, as you enjoy in this season, how I pray that you will become aware of your status when it comes to your relationship and fellowship with God and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for your people. We pray for your grace. We pray for your spirit. We pray that, God, you will continue to be with us. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for Christmas. We thank you for the death and resurrection of your Son. We thank you, Lord, for giving us your Son so that we can be saved. And I pray today for your people, and I ask that you also bless them greatly and mightily. In Jesus' name. If you're there today and you have not received Jesus in your life, we'd like to say a prayer with you and repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have said that prayer, you have received Jesus into your life and you have become a child of God and you have secured for yourself everlasting life through Jesus Christ. So talk to us. We want to send you materials so that they can help you to grow in the faith. God bless you and God be with you. Amen.